Two-time World Series champion Josh Beckett, the first time in 2003 with the Miami Marlins, the Florida Marlins, and the second time in 2007 with the Boston Red Sox. Josh Beckett joining me now live from Florida. We'll talk about the golf tournament in just a bit, but I want to take you back, Josh, almost 20 years ago, a phenomenal pitching performance in that 2003 World Series. What do you remember from that time? You know, I remember going to Chicago it wasn't the World Series, but I remember going to Chicago and I, we had to face Mark Pryor and then Kerry Wood. And I don't think any of us packed enough clothes. I just probably not great advice for kids like believing in themselves. But I don't think any of us thought was, we, were, we were actually going to get out of Chicago. And we went there <laughs> and everything happened with the game six with the Bartman and and everything like that. And, um, you know, I, I think that's what sticks out to me. And also, like, just that team being so young and, you know, I, I I think this slips most people's mind now, but we 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 fired our manager, our pitching coach, and our strength coach. With, I, I mean, I don't know, like maybe maybe a hundred games left. I think we were like <laughs> ten or twelve games under five hundred. And quite frankly, I think going into spring training, I don't think that we thought we were. I mean, we were probably underperforming a little bit, but we were very young. Um, I don't think that we were like why are they firing all these people? Like, did they honestly think we were going to be better? And, you know, then they get Jack McKeon in there. I mean, he could not have been more <laughs> different than, than uh, Jeff Torborg. I mean, it was just a whirlwind of a season. Most of us came up through the Meyer leagues together. Um, it was a very tight knit group. Um, we had very few veteran guys on that team. I would say Mike Redman and Mike Lowell were the, were the two, at least for the whole season. You know, we traded for Jeff Conine at the, uh, at the deadline. Uh, we called up Miguel Cabrera that year, you know, and obviously he's went on to have an unbelievable career, but we were very talented. I think we were more talented than we thought we were. I mean, somebody in the front office must have must have thought that we were more talented than we were playing. <laughs> Take me back to the complete game shutout game six against the New York Yankees. You're the only pitcher in the wild card era, Josh, that has a complete game shutout in a World Series. Prior to that, of course, it was Jack Morris. What was going on in your head to be so effective that day when it mattered the most? I mean, I think we were just running on adrenaline. It, it was it, there wasn't any like magic thing or anything like that. We were we were very loose. It was it felt kind of like we were had already succeeded. I mean, even making the playoffs and then getting through the Giants, getting through the Cubs and um you know i it, it was I, like it, like i said i don't i don't really remember that night because like i said we were running on adrenaline i mean we we honestly were i remember after that game i i just sat in like the the eating room i mean everybody's partying in there but i was <laughs> i was exhausted like and not just from that <laughs> night i just was like emotionally like completely done <laughs> World Series clinching game, you got the job done. All right, a few years later, uh, you're with the uh, Boston Red Sox, but we're going to skip over that for just a minute because I only have a certain amount of time with you. Your last mm. season in the big leagues, Josh, you were with the Los Angeles Dodgers, and I had the privilege of witnessing. This was after the thoracic outlet syndrome surgery, after all that you had gone through. When you had mm. the no-hitter against the Phillies in Philadelphia, final out of the game was against Chase Utley. You were so loose, so happy, talking to the police officer or, you know, normally you guys don't want to be spoken to and everyone's away from you. Can you take me through that game again? Well, anybody that knows me, I'm not like that. Like, especially like, I've played with some guys on their start day, like from the day that from the time they get to the ballpark to the to the time the game's over, you just don't talk to them. But I'm I'm just not one of those guys. You know, I mean, you can ask anybody that I played with. I mean, it was it. And that day was probably uncomfortable for a lot of those guys because, you know, I hadn't been there that long. It's not like. I knew a lot of those guys real well. I mean, I, I knew them pretty well, but, you know, I'd missed the whole season prior to that with, you know, rehabbing from my injury. And, you know, I, I mean, I think some of them were just like, they were just trying to stay away from me, like especially the <laughs> younger guys. They were just like, I'm not going down there because I don't I don't want to break this this unwritten rule or written rule, whatever, whatever it is. Um, but, yeah, I'm, I'm not that kind of guy. I sit down there and I talk to myself more than I talk to anybody else probably. <laughs> 
That was so awesome to witness that. And I know that uh, the police officer in the dugout for your security, uh, you guys were uh, talking it up. And, and what a moment after coming back from all that you had gone through. All right. One thing that you haven't skipped a beat on is golf. I know that you and Ian Happ, among other uh, f big leaguers, former big leaguers and current active players, are playing in this tournament with LPGA players. How difficult is it to make sure that you guys uh, can kind of live up to how good these women are? Oh, well, there's no way we can we can do that. They're they're so nice. So they come out and they, you know, most of them are. I know I played with Christy Kerr last year and, you know, I think it was my first day. I, I'm nervous at these things. This is not this is not in my comfort zone. I don't I don't play a lot of golf during the winter time. So I kind of come into this tournament and I really have no expectations whatsoever. But they're they're so awesome. And, and you know, just to get to watch them. And I don't think people understand this. Obviously, they hit the ball straight off the tee. But these women's short games, putting, chipping, pitching, it's it, – it, it's. I mean, and I've played with a lot of professional men golfers, and I would put these girls up against anybody in the world around the greens. Yeah, Danielle Kang, uh, the winner of it last year, and Derek Lowe, the celebrity winner, mm -hmm. if you will. You got a shot, Beckett? You got a shot at winning this thing this year? What do you need no, to do? Nothing? No, not at all. No, I'm not a Derek Lowe or a Mark Mulder or Marty Fish. There's, I mean, there's there's probably seven or eight guys. Smoltzy's certainly in there. Um, you know, there's probably seven or eight guys that are actually here to to possibly win this tournament. You know, and some of them may not, they may not finish in, in those seven because I think that they take extra risks whenever it comes down to the last day. You know, I'm trying to just hit the ball in the fairway, hit the ball in the green, two putt, get out of there and, and, and make my par. <laughs> I mean, that's honestly my goal. All right. If you make par, then we'll call it a good day. 29 LPGA yes. Tour uh, participants and about 53 different celebrities. Two-time World Series champion Josh Beckett, thanks for taking the time to be with us. And uh, like Chris Russo told Ian Hat, make sure you try to hit it straight, my friend.